Okay, a continuation of uh, talking about more about tests and alpha and beta and power and things like that. All right, so we're still in the context of regulating the emissions uh, inspections, and I wanted to make things a little more precise. Um, I know that we're trying to avoid the specific numbers, but I think it's going to help if we just have some number to, to point to. Let's say that uh, we're going to make the null hypothesis more precise. The null hypothesis is not just saying that the, the shop is in compliance. Let's say that the um, percentage of cars that we test as a state agency, um, cars passed by the shop that we test and find um, to have too high emissions, Let's say that we have some wiggle room. It's going to be, it'd be weird to set this to zero, just the way the mathematics works. Um, let's say we have, a little, we have a little bit of grace that we give them, and we say we allow 3% is 3%. Let's say we found that for a shop that's really trying hard and doing a generally good job, they still accidentally pass 3% of cars that they shouldn't pass. Okay. Let's say that's our null hypothesis, and our HA is going to be uh, that that percentage is greater than 3%. Still a one-sided test. Okay, so I'm making it a little bit more precise than we, we absolutely need to for the problem, but I think it'll help for the explanation. Okay, so that's why I put a 3% here to make this more precise. So now on this picture, um, what we expect, if we assume the null hypothesis, we expect that we're going to see um, when we test 10, 20, 40, 100 cars, we're going to see some proportion of inappropriate passing from the uh, the emissions place that's centered on three percent. Maybe we'll see a little high because we accidentally see more bad cars. Maybe it's a little low because we accidentally see lo more uh, fewer bad cars. That's how the variation of statistics works. And as I said, um, what we're going to do is we're going to have some idea. Let's say we set a, a predetermined alpha level. Let's say that we set. We don't have to do this. We talked about this in class a little bit. We say, say we set alpha equals 0.05, pretty standard. Okay, we set alpha equals 0.05. Okay, we do the math to determine what the critical p star will be. Okay, and that's going to depend on exactly our sample size. Okay, and that's going to be this line. That's going to be the P star, so that if we actually find a P that's above that region, that's above that line, somewhere in here, we're going to say, oh, we reject the null. Okay. Now, when I'm pointing here, I'm specifically talking about two things happening together, very much like in this 2x2 two two diagram. When we point here on this picture, we're assuming the null hypothesis really is true, and the variation, the sample variation really follows this model centered on the P naught, which shouldn't cause a problem shouldn't activate our desire to, sh to revoke the license. And yet, we accidentally, we're on the high side of this distribution, we accidentally get a bunch, we're unlucky, or the shop is unlucky, and we get a bunch of cars that are bad, and we think that P is higher than it really is. That's committing a type 1 error. So we'd like this tail to be small, ideally. The alpha level, if you set a predetermined alpha level, which is one of the ways to do this, you will go ahead and say, I'm going to set this slider here, see if I can get this to work. Uh, not really. Oh, yeah. I'm going to set this slider. Nope. That's not what I wanted to do. Oh, it's this guy. I'm going to set this guy so that the alpha is as small as I want it. So I'm going to choose the P star. That's what choose, determining the critical P star is. I'm going to determine that P star so that this alpha level is 0.05, that this has 5% of the probability. Okay. So that's one way to do things. That's setting the probability of a type 1 error to be what we want, the alpha level. Okay. Now, the case might be that, in fact, the shop is um, passing way too many. Maybe, in fact, they really pass a, a larger percentage P. Maybe they, per, they pass like 7% bad cars, which is way larger than we want to do it, even though we allow a little bit of slop in the system. So what's going to happen? Ideally, if we sampled their cars, we would find exactly 7% of bad cars being passed. It's not going to happen because we're doing a, ra a small random sample. And so maybe we actually find bigger than 7 or less than 7. Okay. Well, if we've already set our alpha level 
to avoid type 1 errors with a certain probability so that make them make it a pretty small occurrence that we're accidentally getting this tail and make the wrong decision that's going to affect the probability that we inappropriately fail to reject H0 make a type 2 error that's called beta okay so as we slide this what you notice is that if you make your alpha level bigger that's make increasing the probability of a type 1 error we can decrease the probability of a type 2 error but that's at, at the expense of increasing alpha if we want to decrease alpha we move it to the right we're unfortunately going to increase the probability of a type 2 error so this is just a dynamic version of the, the diagram you see in the book which is a really crucial crucial picture okay that alpha and beta are kind of complementary um, they are kind of we can decrease one at the expense of increasing the other okay so let's see um, then the power is the last big concept the power is just one minus beta and it's a good thing to be big so alpha and beta we typically want to have small there are probabilities of errors so we want them to be small the power of a test is 100 percent or just one minus beta the probability of, of a type 2 that tells you how likely it is that we're going to correctly reject the, the, the null hypothesis in the case where something interesting is going on. So the power, you want to think of a, a powerful test as something that will detect interesting stuff, where it's only r relevant in under the assumption that it actually is appropriate to reject H0. And if we, um, if we set this thing way to the right, we're going to get less power because we might have a very large percentage of the time where we get under get get a sample proportion in here and we think oh it's less than our p star I don't think anything weirds going on I think I think I'm really up here and I think that the null hypothesis is true oops if the null hypothesis isn't true we've made a mistake okay the bigger this tail is over here the more likely that is to happen so we'd like the power to be big okay so the power in summary in this case the power of the test is this is the probability that we will correctly reject the null. It's a um, it's a conditional probability. It's the probability that we reject H naught given that H naught is actually false. So again, conditional probabilities are actually pretty essential to truly understanding this stuff. Okay, so um, we've seen that moving the p star, or equivalently changing the alpha level, increasing the alpha level, um, decreases the beta and increases power, but the expense of being more likely to commit a type one error. Remember that the repair shop does not like that. He says you're being too strict. You're pushing the level, the critical level, way too low. Yeah, you got a P star that was right here, but maybe it was just by accident. I don't think it's because it was really representative of this big P. This big P. I think it was just that my P naught, the the actual P is really P naught. It's really three percent. You, I just got unlucky, and you got a few bad cars. Okay. Now, is there a way that we can actually improve the situation? It's not a something where to improve alpha, we have to degrade beta. Well, yes. Okay. And that's what this is about. Will the power be greater if they test 20 or 40 cars? You can pretty much guess the answer based on the no free lunch principle. If you test more cars, you're doing more work, you probably get a better result. Why is that? Well, what's going on there is a bigger sample size decreases the variability of both of these normal curves. You, they're gonna, we're going to assume they're normal because we usually use the normal model. Okay. So if you decrease the variability quite a bit, well, let's decrease it to like here. Okay. Then the overlap is not nearly as much. And so now I can happily set my P star to still have a pretty small probability of getting a type 1 error. It's not that likely that in the case the null hypothesis is true that I'll accidentally cross the critical threshold and inappropriately think they're bad. But it's also not that likely that I will accidentally get too low um, a count of bad cars in the, under the assumption that they actually um, are doing something wrong. So we've decreased the probability of convicting the innocent and of letting the guilty go free simultaneously. And so the power will always be greater with a larger sample size. That's something that's just, it's, we want to understand why, but it is really almost a no-brainer from um, the no free lunch principle. Um, more work, more power. Okay, No pain, no gain is basically the idea. Okay, 
will the power be greater if they use a 5% or 10% level of significance? Okay, so remember that's the alpha level. It's just another name for the the uh, level of significance. That's the alpha level. Okay, so let's see. Let's imagine this is a 5% level of significance, 5% alpha, and I'm going to increase that. I increase the percentage, the, the area under this tail in this picture. I'm letting myself have more probability that I will falsely convict an innocent uh, repair shop. But look what happened. I move by to increase alpha. I move this to the left. I do increase the power. Okay, so increasing alpha, which in itself is a bad thing, more likelihood of a false positive, saying you're bad, you did something wrong when it's not really true, does increase the power of the test, which is a good thing. So the good comes with the bad there, okay? It does increase the likelihood that if they really were doing something wrong, it's going to uh, it's going to show up. Okay, and that makes sense. If I institute procedures that are more harsh and are more pessimistic and more strict, I'm going to have more likelihood that I accidentally judge somebody harshly, too harshly when they shouldn't be. But I'm also going to be more likely to catch the real bad guys. Okay. Um, will the power be greater if the repair shop's inspectors are, are only a little out of compliance or a lot? Okay, well, what's the deal here? Notice I put in this 7%. We don't know what this is. The 3% is something that we put in as a null hypothesis. We don't know if, they're, if they really are doing something bad. We're not exactly sure how bad it is. But what we can do is we can kind of imagine, hmm, let's see. If they were just a little out of compliance, Notice that even though these guys, I've, sh I've used a pretty big sample size to get these to shrink and narrow the variation, if they were only a little bit out of compliance, it's going to be hard to detect. That's, again, not too, not too surprising. If we're back in a situation where there's a lot of overlap, and to, make, and to use a small alpha, I have to have a huge beta. And to make beta small, I have to have a huge, huge alpha. I don't really want either of those possibilities. I'm probably going to go ahead and choose, still choose a pretty small alpha because it's what I have more control over and I don't want to convict a lot of innocent defendants, but then I've got, a fairly, um, I've got a fairly lax kind of test. If it's hard to accidentally convict somebody, it's probably a pretty lenient standard, and I'm not going to detect somebody who's just a little bit over the line. Now, if, um, in fact, this repair shop is just way out of line, okay, and I know these guys aren't following me a lot. Oh, these guys aren't following me here. Um, then... I could have, whoa, I could have a super tiny alpha. The alpha could be almost be zero, and yet um, I'm still going to have a good power. Okay, now that's pretty unlikely. If You probably don't need statistics for that. It's probably pretty obvious at that point if it's that bad. Okay, but this is more likely where it's pretty far out of line, and I've got alpha small and beta's not super small, not super large either. Okay, so this says that um, if the shop is way out of line, it's easier to detect that. So the power is greater. Um, one of the things the book says, uh, discusses, just to finish this up real quick, um, you don't know how out of compliance they are. You don't even know if they're out of compliance. So one thing you can do, um, what, what can you decide in advance? After all, one of the things you're trying to decide is how do you set the P star in equivalently how do you set the alpha level? How do you make that decision? Okay, What you can decide in advance, as they say in the book, is what kind of effect size do you care about? Okay, Like in here, let's say we're totally fine with 3% um, of bad cars being passed. We say, eh, it's not ideal, but it's fine. Okay, um, How far away from it do we care? We're, we're really going to be upset, and we really want to make sure we detect it. Okay. Let's say 7% is something where we really consider that a big, big effect. And so we'll just go ahead and say, okay, let's imagine a, a, a repair shop that is bad in this degree with this kind of effect size, that they're 4% bigger than we want them to be. Okay, If we imagine that that's the kind of typically bad wrongdoer we want to catch in this process, that gives us a way to start, the, start doing these calculations. Okay, the effect size that we want to detect is 3% changing to 7%. That's this picture. Now we can set our P star 
and we get a sense, a more precise sense of, okay, I can get this alpha and still get this much power. Well, uh, I don't want to convict so many innocent guys. Maybe make the alpha smaller. Is the power still good? Not ideal, but it's still okay. All right. So that's often the, the, the actual logic. You first think about, after the null hypothesis, you think about what's the effect size you really care about. If, you change, if we change this guy to, you know, maybe this was, um, let's go to text mode. If this was 3.5%, okay, let's look at what that would do. If this is really close, we're not going to be able to do anything at all. We're going to have to have, you're going to have a huge alpha with a small power. We're just not going to be able to do anything. But guess what? We probably didn't care anyway. Our job is not to detect, uh, go to a lot of effort to detect people who are just a little bit over the line. So this is often, the effect size is um, often one of the first steps. And we'll try to do some explicit problems with numbers where we first look at, after null hypothesis, we look at effect size, then we look at alpha level, and then we have a fairly precise idea of what we should do to make these judgments.